Good afternoon, evening, or morning for everyone. Um, I'm Patrick Fitzgerald, um, and my my little presentation in the and tiny little bit of code is uh, all about a about zero configuration um, of whatever you want, not just uh, files and, and printers. Um, so, you know, what the hell is uh, zero configuration? What's uh, DNS, what's Avahi, what's um, multicast DNS. Um, and to get to that, we're going to have to go through a, a couple of steps. To, so if you know a lot about networking, you're going to get bored. Um, if you don't know anything, um, hopefully it'll, it'll be helpful. Um, and, and our use case of, uh, of why we needed it, what we wanted to do with it, um, and how it's actually working very well. Um, there are some limitations, um, and there's a bit of code we're going to go through. Um, and we're going to do a, a very small demo because, um, well, that's what I promised. Um, but actually having done it, uh, it's not this, it's, it's underwhelming because it just works. So this is, uh, this is me, um, Patrick Fitzgerald, CEO of uh, Required Magic. Uh, we specialize in, in large scale Linux deployments. Um, been a programmer since forever. Um, spent about eight years working in film and television before it all went digital. Um, and uh, a friend of mine once described me as being creative in all directions, but I'm not sure if he, he was insulting me or com complimenting me. I'm not sure about that. Um, some of the things I've done uh, in 2010, we built uh, uh, with a, a colleague, we built an open source cloud based on on SUSE Linux, um, and it's still running in, in data centers in both Zurich and London, and it's got some large financial uh, institutions using a third party software package that uh, who are basically the people we're hosting for. Um, and I'm also an, a refugee uh, because of Brexit, um, because about, about six months ago, I realized it was all turning uh, quite sour and the relationship uh, from Britain to the rest of the world is troubling, at, to say the least. Um, so I've moved to Germany um, and uh, enjoying it very much. Um, and I'm a survivor of many things, uh, not including a, a cardiac arrest that happened uh, around this time two years ago. Um, but that's something for a drink later. So bonjour, as Apple like to say. Um, it's it was actually I think it was originally designed by Apple, um, and when you connect your laptop, you can see a printer, and you can also see other devices that are on the on the on your same network on your same network segment. Um, if you've got a Mac, which I don't, but I understand that uh, it you. You turn it on, and if you've got a time back, time machine backup, it finds it automatically. And how does it, how does your computer know where your another device is on the network? <clears throat> um, and of course, you plug in a Linux or Windows or Mac system, and you can see other hosts on the on the same network. Um, what's that? You know, how how does that little piece of magic work? Because it's not necessarily an obvious thing for it to to to, to be done <clears throat> and if you're you know why do you care well if you're not a developer or, or a product designer you've probably got no interest in this so you should head to the bar anyway um, but it's it's just a bit of interesting uh, work that we we had to do because we're doing a large-scale implementation of some of, uh, of Linux across um, thousands of desktops um, so uh, the way this works is is two technologies. Uh, one is called multi multicast DNS or MDNS, and the, and uh, DNS service discovery or DNS SD. Um, that's been implemented in all the major desktop platforms for some time, way back uh, in two thousand and two with the Mac. Um, and Windows is taking its time um, and gradually into implementing it. Um, I can't imagine why. Is taking so long for Windows to get everything working. Um, it's very simple protocol. 
Um, they probably had their own ideas as to what to do and how to do it, um, like Microsoft tend to do. Um, but it, the, the protocol itself is very simple um, and it works. This, similar things have been developed to do similar things in, in different environments. For example, your computer will also, uh, depending on, on how, you've, how you've got it all set up, may discover your TV. Um, your TV might discover your storage device um, and offer to, to connect to it um, or to your mu music players. Um, and that's, you know, this is, they're all different implementations of the same thing, which is, I've got something to offer you. I've got a, a service I need to offer you. How can, how can I tell you about it? So, so this is just a bit of a, a bit of a detail um, and a, a simple trip down network lane. Um, so a local area network is defined as, a, well, it's technically de defined as a broadcast domain. Um, but that's defined by a bunch of computers networked together um, with a router at, at, at one end. Um, and everything that has to go off the network um, goes through that router or multiple routers in an enterprise situation. <clears throat> um, a LAN, um, and I know this because I was programming network code 20 years ago in Assembler, um, is different sorts of packets are sent across a local area network. And I'm simplifying here because there's a, this is all based on TCP IP. There, there are similar, um, similar uh, architecture that exists at, at layer two, but the layer, the network layer that we're interested in is TCP IP. Um, so it does, it does broadcast and the broadcast is essentially sending a packet to every machine on the network. Now, that if you're in a switched environment or, or, or in a hub environment, if you're in a hub, you're connected to a hub, not a network switch, which most people have switches now. In fact, 99% of, I think, network in installations are switched. Um, but if you're a hub, I send you a packet as a broadcast and every machine on the network gets that broadcast. Um, similarly, um, the, it's, it works the same way on the switch. Um, but the broadcast is, is something that the machine and the network card is told to, to listen to and listen for because it's something important. And it might be something similar, simple, like, um, you know, I want to get, you know, I, in fact, I can't tell you the, the circumstances where they use broadcasting, but it's something like when you join a computer, when you start a computer up, it might send a broadcast uh, to get uh, Pixie information or something like that. Um, multicasting is similar to, to a broadcast. Um, and it's, it's, it's sent to a certain address. But that certain address is then distributed uh, across all the connected hosts that are turned on. Now, the reason why there are two different types of that is because a broadcast is almost always a non-routable. So your broadcast will get to the router um, or router. Um, I'm Australian, so I can say it either way. Um, and it stops at the router um, because there's a, there's a slide coming up. No. Yeah, there we go. Go chaos. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's, it's, uh, it's typically it's non-routable because you don't want those kind of broadcasts uh, to escape to other networks. Multicasting is 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 also similar. Is pretty well typically non-routable as well. And a, a unicast is when you send one uh, a packet from my machine to your machine and no one else knows about it. Um, so, but in all cases, there has to be a service, a network service or, a, or a, um, a, an application sitting on the, on the, on the system uh, that is receiving the information, receiving the packet. Otherwise, it is accepted by the, by the network uh, card and rejected at some point. 
Um, so yeah, broadcast packet is sent to all, all, in, all addresses. Um, and the thing is about that, it consumes CPU. So even if there's nothing running on that machine that accepts that packet, the, the network inf interface card has to accept that packet and then pushes it up from the hardware into the software, through firmware into the software that the operating system is. And the operating system says, I've got nothing to do with this packet. I don't know what it is. Or it says, oh, yeah, I've got, I can, I've got something that will accept that. Um, so a broadcast is quite, well, back in the day when I was doing it, you could have a, a um, you know, if everyone's broadcasting, it would s physically slow down the system. It also, a, a lot of uh, a lot of network protocols require a the, a broadcast to be ex uh, to be answered by another broadcast. And if you get into that kind of situation, it, it ends it ends up in in packet hell. Um, so the same thing happens with multicast. Um, and again, it goes up to the up the network stack to discover if something's working. Um, now, routable or routable uh, broadcasts. I mean, what happens? Why would you stop that at the router, and why would you stop a multicast packet at the at the router? Because perhaps there are things you know you could send to everyone, and you don't have to send it. You don't have to get a list of everyone. You send it once, um, and. If, you, if you're paying attention to what I've been saying, then you'll end up with absolute chaos because if network routers and, and uh, your routers to your, that are connected to your broadband um, networks could see every other computer on the internet, you know, no one would get anything done, literally. It is like everyone's yelling at you, broadcasting information at you. Um, and you're trying to listen. That's the worst thing is that every machine, every node on the network has to listen to what everyone else has got to say. And pretty soon, um, you, know, you can't actually communicate with anything. Um, you can go to the broadcast storm page on, on Wikipedia. It's a well-known thing. Um, and of course, so there are multiple standards. Um, it's just a, a uh, bit of a comic there from XKCD. Um, it's, there, as I said before, there are multiple standards uh, for multiple industries that have all had their own ideas as to what is, you know, they've got something they want to plug on, plug into uh, a home network. How do we make that? Well, a lot of it is probably proprietary and, and, uh, and not open source and, um, it, and but gradually they're coming. They're coming down into a a, a, a a common standard, which is actually called zero conf. <clears throat> Let's get some water. So what? So we, how do we get to to this? Um, how we've got a Linux uh, deployment tool called Snoopier because we. Can't think of anything better for it to call it. Um, and one of the use cases was rather than just doing a deployment of Linux onto a thousand or ten thousand um, workstations, if we're doing that, then we could inject a monitoring tool um, and return information um, about all sorts of things back to a centralized node. So it could be managed better. Um, we could get disk space warnings, all these kind of things that every other uh, management tool has. Um, but this is usually for edge devices and and uh, workstation devices. Um, and you know, we 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 saw some other some very interesting ways that we could use a, a, a an agent in on the machine. So we we started writing one. Um, but one of the things is. Um, how does, so on every network that, uh, that we install onto, you have to have a, a, could be a virtual machine or just a, a server node or a sync node that then talks to the cloud service that we offer. Um, or if you're doing it locally at the local service. Um, instead of making everything uh, 
hand editing the the uh, lo the location of the server's IP address or the sync server's IP address. Um, we just figured there's got to be a better way um, because in a corporate environment, in an enterprise environment, we wanted to be we wanted to slip in the so the software and the the ability to to do what we're trying to do under not under the radar, but might as well be. You know, the the harder it is for someone to to deploy deploy a tool in a in an enterprise environment, the less likely it is to be accepted. Um, and that was that was one of the, the things that was driving the de development is how do we make everything as easy as possible. So instead of doing a deployment and then running, you know, a, a another tool that will then write um, its own uh, configuration file that points the 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 um, the node management software to to the appropriate IP address, we just thought well, maybe we should look at zero conf. Um, and we, everything we've written is in Python. Um, and we did some, we, we came across, an, a, I think there are multiple libraries. Um, there's one called ZeroConf. Um, and it's super simple to, to uh, use. So what is like multicast DNS and DNS service dis discovery? So multicast, uses a multicast packet or several packets uh, to query host names on the same subnet. Um, usually that is provided by uh, a DNS service uh, and thinking, bearing in mind the whole thing that I just said before about enterprise and trying not to change anything um, or as little as possible. If you're in a, a I mean, one of the um, major customers is a is a, a bank, um, and they had. I mean, whenever we're talking to them, we had to get three different represent uh, representatives from three different departments. So it was the hardware people, it was the the uh, the authentication and Active Directory people, and the client uh, the client manager, um, and if we needed to. Um, the networking people as well, who are, who are generally in charge of DNS, although if you're in Active Directory. But you're know, making changes to Active Directory, making changes to DNS, if everyone, if, if it was, not everyone wants to do it. In fact, everyone wants to do as little as possible, to be honest. So we had to find a way to provide, to get the host name of every machine that is running our software, um, or at least the other way around, to find to find the host that every machine needed to talk to. They don't need to talk to each other. They just need to talk to our service that's sitting on their network. Um, so we ask the question, and the network tells us, and then we ask the question: service, you know, what the service, or the DNS SD does, which is it basically says, are you running this service? And can I use that service? Um, and what port are you running at? And what's your IP address? Now, DNS SD works with regular DNS and, and uh, multicast DNS. Um, in in all, all these scenarios, uh, you'll have a DNS server. But for example, if you've got 8.8.8.8 .8 as your DNS server, there is no way that you're going to be able to convince Google to, to tell your local network where where your um, where your Snoopy Sync server is, for example. So um, we put a text file, or can be built into the code um, at the server end. We can say we're doing this this kind of uh, we, we're offering this service at uh, this IP address. Um, come and find it. DNS works the same way with if you know anything about DNS. There are such, such things as uh, D SRV and, and text records, um, and they're, they're things you send, you, you apply to your DNS server and say, this is the, uh, the uh, you know, the location of an active directory server, for example, or, um, or a configuration information, which is stored in text, a text, a TXT record, 
and that's um, one of the things that you you come across if you're doing um, what's it called the the, um, the certificate um, cert bot configurations for um, Let's Encrypt. Um, if you're doing a a domain wide um, a, a, a building a certificate for a domain wide thing, so like star dot required magic dot com, um, you have to put some text into your DNS record so that it, it can look at it and go, oh, okay, so that's the key that I need to to build to do the to build the subscript the uh, certificate. Um, so then, as I said, the the, the micro DNS or the macro, sorry, the uh, the, the multicast uh, DNS program uh, asks the network who the host is, um, and then it the, then it has this conversation about what what it's got and how how do I connect to it. So we're rapidly a lot faster than I expected um, getting to the code. Um, so how simple is the code? I mean, it's the server is, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's all you do in, in a Python program to say, this is what I'm offering. Um, we can go through it. I'm not sure if you can see the pointer. I probably can't. And I can't see any comments, um, because my screen's too small. Um, but you in import the zero conf service um, and you create an instance of it and then you say this is what um and there, there's a we've got a settings file which basically says this is the site ui uid um which is set in a it's put into a settings file um and uh, a label which is broker host um and the service info is uh, magic dash sync. Um, and that, the, what follows that bit is specifically, is specific to, you know, every single um, uh, MDNS uh, entry or zero conf entry has something like that. And that says that this is a TCP, it's an exchange, it's a, a, um, a, a transactional um, message uh, or packet sending. Um, and the identifier, um, and the other thing there is the dot local. Um, dot local is one of the key things of that because it's a it's dot local is actually for your local area, um, your local area network, and your home or any other things. So people must make mistakes when they think that defining it in in their DNS settings in in say in, a, in an enterprise environment. Um, is helpful and it, it actually isn't it shouldn't do that <clears throat> so um so so we look up um some of the details now what our client soft uh, the client software and the server software is trying to send information backwards and forwards using um just uh let's see port what's it i've just uh, had a mental block about the um the um, uh, MQTT. That's it. Um, so MQTT is a uh, is a very lightweight message passing system, message queuing system, and that's how we 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 send messages backwards and forwards um, from the client to the to the server, and backwards and forwards from that. Um, and that's the port number one one eight. 83, that's the default port. We could change that um, in the settings if we wanted to. Um, and the description is multi is magic sync dot local. So then we we have these two functions that are defined uh, at the beginning of the program link in, loop in the server. Um, one is uh, init zero, um, and that's basically init initing the um, the the, uh, the zero conf uh, service, um, so it registers it, and if there's a problem, of course you you log that, um, and then uh, at the end of uh, the program loop, when you're sh when you're closing everything down, then obviously you, you be nice and, and unregister the service, 
um, from from the uh, from the system. Um, so that I'm not sure if anyone can see that. I have to zoom in if possible. Um, and I think I can zoom in. Can I? No. Um, but there are two pages to this code, um, and it's a lot of it is actually just comments, um, and it's basically super simple. Get a list of devices. Get a um, remove the service. Start the service. Count the number of servers that are offering the service because it might not be just one. Um, and then you add the service to to the uh, you return the, what the service details are having been asked. And this multi magic listener class is how this is the, the as complex as it gets to start the service. Um, and then this is where we where we call that magic listener um, class and we say uh, you know, maximum number of servers is five and it's a five second part of the timeout. Um, and it just basically says start the listener and then come back if there's if there's nothing or come back if there is something uh, that, that's returned. Uh, and that's that's as complex as it seems to get. Um, and then this is a there's a mixture of stuff here that you probably you may have seen. Um, and it, so the client the client makes a request and it comes back as a as a JSON packet, just saying this is the location for the service that you need to contact. Um, this is the port um, that you need to talk to. Um, weight and priority if they're different uh, different services that I haven't actually got to the bottom of those yet because I've got, this is working perfectly when we first did it. So there's no point to go any further. Um, and uh, the site, the the X thirty five BCU is actually the host name, and the broker host is the is the its IP address. So it talks, it finds that all that information just from starting up with no configuration whatsoever. And it sets things that you would normally have to put into a text file. Um, and then our code uh, then writes the conf configuration configuration file. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to refer to it again uh, by doing the service, the, the, uh, the, 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 the zero conf um, stuff, but it does anyway. Um, <clears throat> and um, we can change, this means also that we can change the location of the server. Um, we can change the port number. Um, we could put in multiple servers or multiple uh, on multiple IP addresses or multiple ports. It's all just, you put this kind of, these couple of pages into your Python code. Is, um, and you'll end up, and you've got this, the similar service sitting at the, on the server side, you'll then be able to do everything zero configuration like this and you'll get the information back. It's, it's, it's I love it. Um, and that's actually the end of the presentation, but it's not because in theory, if I go over here, I can give you a very brief demonstration of this. And uh, oh, let's see if we can make that larger. So we've got the, this is the, um, the server, and this side is the client. Um, and unfortunately, due to a um, out of all out of all things to happen, a a networking error or a network problem that I've got at home, um, I have to connect to a client site. Don't tell them um, to do this uh, to to demonstrate this. Um, this particular version of Snoopy Sync doesn't have any. Um, any, oh no, there's no logging. So it's almost pointless not you know, showing people because the log doesn't come, come up. Um, I can go there. So you won't actually see anything change at the, at the server side.
um, there'll probably be some, some errors that pop up, but they're, they're irrelevant. Um, there's nothing really, but what you're seeing there are things that are being sent from different, uh, oh, there's an error. Um, but this is a client there, actually, it's, it's, this is the sync server subscribing to the MQTT server, which is running on the same machine. So it's not, not very dramatic, not, not very interesting. Um, but here on the client side, it's kind of where it gets, it gets cool. Um, so we'll restart that and then immediately call the log. And you'll see there, it's checking for zero conf services and it's found them. It's found one because there's one and it's there at that and it writes the, and it's already sending this information to the server. Yeah, as I said, there's no, I don't think there's any indication that's receiving that maybe. Um, published stats, I think is one of the things that goes up upstream. Um, but it's sent all that information immediately, you know, upon subscription to the service. And it does this um, on a regular basis, which is on our system is, is, uh, is hand and uh, it's, a, it's configurable. So you can do it. Um, and you also see that they're running an old version of Leap. So we'll have to fix that. Um, and yeah, the, so that's kind of it in terms of the way it all works. Um, And so yeah, that's that's kind of it. So I'm just going back to the so I think that's kind of that's the that's the presentation. Um, and I can uh, answer some questions at the uh, in the in the chat room. So I'll see you there.